to the trip cash yeah i didn't uh perpetuated and came through here a couple of times fooling with y'all because i'm cool with y'all man but you know how it go check this out i was watching uh uh who that was yeah i like that i was watching boss talk one-on-one -on -one earlier because like i said i ain't no ghost follow when i watch your stuff and i fool with you because i'm cool with you man i'm gonna hit you i'm gonna perpetuate your algebra i'm gonna hit that like Y'all go ahead and hit that like button for me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and give you that thumbs up. I'm gonna hit that like and give you that thumbs up. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm gonna perpetuate your algebra and I'm gonna get in them comments. You know what I'm saying? Because all that means something to the algorithm and all that help a brother channel. So any brothers out there doing their thing, if I come by your channel, I know what to do. So y'all who coming by my channel right now. I'm giving y'all the, 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 the instructions. Get in that chat and ask a question if you got a question. Uh, might answer, might not. Who cares? Don't matter. Just get in there and do it. Also, hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? Also, comment. Also, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And also, if you fool with me because you cool with me, share the video, man. You know what I'm saying? Because we doing nothing but keeping it trill over here, man. And hey, man, so this is how it go. I was over there watching Boss Talk one-on-one. -on -one, you know what I'm talking about? checking out another volume of Pimpin' Ken and Bobo chopping it up. Well, they happen to be talking about a sensitive subject that I, I I spoke on just a little taste here and there. I ain't never really dawned on it too much because <clears throat> I never seen other brothers talking about it too much. But when they spoke on it, I said, you know what? I knew I wasn't tripping. When Bobo and Pimpin' Ken spoke on what they witnessed at Pimp Funeral, well, not the actual funeral, but the viewing before the funeral. 
I knew I wasn't tripping. I knew I wasn't the only one. Now, me and Vicious and Mama was in close contact during that time, but Mama was going through so much, I didn't want to bother her with what I was thinking. You know what I mean? But me and Vicious did chop it up, because me and Vicious was to, together at the viewing, you know what I'm saying, chilling outside, boom, boom, boom. We had a little brown liquor bottle. We had us a little brown liquor bottle in my in my whip, and we were, we were knocking that back, you know what I mean? But the funeral itself, before that took place, uh, right after his death, things was very chaotic. Let me just say that. Let me just say that. Anybody who was around, they know um, things was very chaotic. It was so much going on. Um, it was some things that were super supernatural that can't be explained. You know, I might mention that on, on, on another day. But it was just so much going on. And Mama had um, so many things to prepare and plan and take so many phone calls. It, it, it really was overwhelming. And then at one point, immediately after, uh, me and Bub dealt with, uh, we had to go pick up some T-shirts because we already had that underway uh, in the motion because that's what we did anyway. So we had to go pick up some T-shirts. And this is maybe a day or two, could be two or three days later. I would say probably about two or three days later. And we go to Houston to pick up our normal blanks for us to do whatever we're going to do with them. And when we get there, you wouldn't believe how fast that these Oriental people had two to three tables stocked up with RIP pimps. I'm talking about these motherfucking shirts was stacked high as hell, man. And they were incredible. I had never seen no shit like that before in my life. Them motherfuckers had some artwork of pimp that was identical. I'm talking about it looked like it was airbrushed. Then they actually had uh, diamonds on the diamonds. Man, them Orientals whipped them motherfuckers up, Jack. And I'm talking about in a matter of days. Now, you got to dig. They trying to say they got them from overseas. They trying to say they got them from overseas. They're a motherfucking lie. They had a sweatshop somewhere in Ace Town where they started as soon as they got the word and somebody explained to him who Pimp C was. Them summer bitches went to mass producing the motherfuckers. And me and Bub went that motherfucker like raging bulls. We, hey, we ain't have no authority about nothing, but we were telling the motherfuckers, oh, no, y'all can't do this here. Oh, no, uh-uh. Y'all can't do this here. Hey, we in that bitch causing ruckus. We got the motherfucking Chinese man and his wife uh, going in and out of character, saying they speak English and they don't speak English, but they talking English, but then they talking Chinese, but they don't speak English. But fuck it. We tell them straight up, uh-uh. We, hey, give me, give me these motherfucking shirts. We taking shirts and shit. We, hey, they tell me, well, let's cut a deal. You know what I mean? Let's cut a deal. And I called mama. I said, mama, I don't want to tell you about this dumb ass shit, but these bitches that mass produce these goddamn shirts. And I said, man, how many have y'all sold? How many dozen have y'all sold? Man, them motherfuckers say, uh, shit, nigga. I'm talking about the dozens was incredible. The dozens would fill up a goddamn uh, storage unit, you know what I'm saying? But they, this is what they do. They talking about, we saw it. We so saw it. After we finish selling these, we don't sell no more. We give you big bulk. We give you big bulk for a little bit of nothing. We give you big bulk for family for a little bit or nothing. You go do what you got to do. Thought you motherfuckers didn't speak English. The motherfuckers spoke hella English. But we wind up leaving with, I'm talking about motherfucking mounds of shirts. Yeah, we had a mounds and pounds of shirts to go break bread with the family. But just how, look how fast. Think about it. The man had just died two, three, two, three days ago. And just like this, they had to mass produce the man image on the shirt next to Biggie Small, Tupac, and everybody else. And we're getting them motherfuckers off. But we wind up leaving with a whole bunch, and then, you know, later on down the line, we went and got a bunch more, and we did some business with them, wouldn't I? Boom, 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 boom. And the whole fam, you know what I'm saying, mama and the team, you know what I'm saying, we uh, benefited off it, and we kept it moving. But during this time, mama was taking on interviews, and she told me to be to the house because we had to do an interview with the local news people. Now, for a couple of days, the local news people were outside, and uh, – I was wondering, was she able to do press? I was wondering, was she able to do press? 
because you got to dig. This is our only child. You know what I mean? And she told me, she said, baby, I know you tore up on the inside. She said, but I'm his mama. And even though I'm destroyed and I'm tore up on the inside, I feel it's a must that I talk to the people. And she said, I want you to talk to the people also. And man, when I tell you, it took the professionalism in me to be able to conduct a press interview at this moment in time. Because at this moment in time, you got to dig. I just had a baby, just had a new baby. I'm dealing with baby mama. I'm dealing with kids. I'm dealing with the phone ringing off the fucking hook. Every goddamn promoter who didn't fuck with me calling me. Every goddamn rapper who didn't fuck with me calling me. Every bitch who didn't fuck with me calling me. My goddamn phone is ringing off the motherfucking. It's going hammer, man. Just straight up going hammer. But we were able to do the press and uh, the news people came in and very melodramatic. Uh, I spoke to the press and kept it moving. Now, during that time, we did a lot of press with a, uh, multiple people that I just can't remember because it was such a chaotic situation, man. I, I I don't have a clue who all I talked to at that time. And mama was just as graceful and articulate and poised and conducted those interviews. And I seen a strength in her that, that bled over to me. I said, regardless of what we're going through, we're going to have to put on that face and be professional. And we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that, Mama was setting up pretty much the, the venue for, for what a body, you know what I'm saying, would have a ceremony, would have a funeral. But before the actual venue for the funeral, there was a venue for the viewing. Now, this is going to be weird. This is going to be weird and shocking because I never really said this before. You know what I mean? But the Civic Center was one building. There was another building uh, off of um, Stadium Road near the, um, the funeral grounds, near the, the burial grounds, the graveyard. The funeral home had this other recession area big enough for just about 100 people. So it was only a select few people that could attend right at about 100 people that could actually view the body. Now at the Civic Center, if you was able to attend the Civic Center, you saw that the beautiful casket was closed. Well, we were able to see the body before they closed the casket. We had a more private, intimate ceremony amongst those 100 people. Amongst those 100 people, it was immediate family, you know what I mean? It was it was close people, you know what I'm saying, in the clique and things of that nature. But then there was a celebrity roster. I saw, I believe, 8-Ball and MJG. I seen 3-6, you know what I'm saying? Um, just, just multiple cats, man. And after a while, I stopped identifying faces. I saw Too Short. Uh, and I just, after a while, I stopped looking around, identifying faces. But it was time for us to walk up and go and view the body. Honorably, I wanted to see my neighbor. Normally, I would rather just remember a person the way they were. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to go and I'm going to be there, but I might not go up to the cast because I would rather view in my mind the, that person the way they were when they were alive. And that's the, the, the remaining memory I would like to hold on to. But Mama said, we're going to go up and see him. And as we walked up, I seen my nigga in a red dicky outfit. 
I say, now nah, that's that's some trill ass shit. That's some trill ass shit. But as I got closer and was able to absorb to observe the body, and I looked at the face, I was I was blown away. Because what I was witnessing, I was hoping everybody else saw what I thought I saw. The body that was in the casket looked as if it was a wax figure. It did. It didn't look like my neck. It didn't look like my neck. I was looking for tattoos and whatever, but I think I saw them, but I don't remember because I was so blown away by the neck up and the and the swelling of the body. The body was really swollen up, and and neck up. The body was darker, pimp. Some people would call me light skin, but I'm really not. I'm like peanut butter or, or red. Pimp was like that part. Pimp was a light skin nigga. You know what I mean? Look at me close, right? I ain't no light skin nigga. I'm a peanut butter, peanut butter brown red nigga. Pimp was a pale yellow nigga. Light skinned nigga. But the body that was in that casket was darker than me. And it looked like a it looked like a wax figure. And it was swole from, from the neck up. It it ex if it, you know, just saying it was him. His neck up had swole up. You know what I mean? And it, it didn't look like him. At that time, I don't know if I'm childlike, slow, dumb, or retarded. But at that time, I ain't never told nobody this. I told Vicious R.I.P. At that time, I almost got an excitement of, okay. My nigga ain't really dead. You know what I mean? I got an overwhelming feeling. Now, 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 now I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to sound weird. I'm just, I'm just saying for that moment because that body didn't look nothing like my nigga, man. I, I, I thought for a minute, okay, my nigga somewhere on the island. I know I'm finna sound stupid. Please forgive me. I know I'm finna sound real stupid, but I was thinking my nigga somewhere on the island with Tupac. I ain't saying that just for no reaction. Listen, listen. I ain't saying that just for no reaction or nothing. I'm just saying like when I looked at that body, it didn't it didn't register to me that that was Pimp C. I thought it was I don't know, and for that moment I was just like, man, my nigga. My nigga somewhere on the island with Tupac. And one day that nigga gonna walk up to me, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Just call, I don't know. Just call me dumb and stupid. I don't know. I just thought like that for some reason for that moment. But I was there. We were going through the motions. It was a possibility that was him and the body had just uh, rigor mortis and decomposition. Huh? I don't even know if that's the word decomposed or decomposition, decomposition. I don't know, man. Leave me alone. But I'm just saying for that moment, I just wanted to feel like this ain't over. And I and and, and that ran through my mind. And so it began to be overwhelming. And Vicious was like, say, bro, let's go out to the car. And when we walked out to the car, I unlocked the door for me and Vicious to get in. And he got in and he, he fired up a cigarette. And I pulled out the bottle of liquor. I don't know what it was. I don't remember was it. Uh, I don't remember was it Crown or ENJ, but it was Brown. And we were taking some swigs. And after a while, I, I was nervous. I don't know what to do. 
I got one of them old cigarettes he was smoking. And we smoking cigarettes. I don't even smoke. But as we smoking cigarettes, we reminiscing, and I look over, and I see look like diamonds falling out of Vicious' eyes. You know, Vicious was a dark-skinned brother. And them tears was just as clear as diamonds. And I'm talking about they was crocodile tears. Now, I was over there with a steady stream of tears. I was weeping. I wept. I had a good, steady stream of good tears. Beautiful, salty uh, emotion, raw emotion, shocked, hurt, disturbed. All the emotions you could imagine losing somebody that close on the climb, on the rise. And Vicious over there with the crocodile tears. So Vicious began to say, bro, he's a Leo, you a hoe, bro. Your bitch ass over there crying like a motherfucker. And I look at this nigga, I say, man, fuck you. <laughs> you over there crying like a motherfucker too, nigga. You ugly as fuck when you cry. You know what I mean? And we passed the liquor and uh, sat there as thugs and now we emotion. Like Bun called some niggas one day. Some gangsters and some gowns. <laughs> <laughs> we sat there as gangsters and a motherfucker uh, crying. You know what I mean? pampering each other and, and, and crying. And uh, I told him what I thought. And he, he told me what he thought. He told me he agreed that that didn't look like pimp. But we didn't go too deep off into the whole theory of he uh, somewhere on the island with Tupac. Uh, I would have to say that was just my dumb ass on that shit. But it was... It was refreshing to see uh, on Boss Talk, Pimp and Ken and Bobo Express what they saw. And it let me know that I wasn't the only one that felt like that or, or saw that body like that. You know what I mean? But yeah, man, uh, I'm going to see what was in the comments. I wanted to get that out before I started looking at the compliments and comments because I ain't want to, you know what I'm saying, uh, mess up my spiel and my recollection. But yeah, that's how it went down, man. And uh, I appreciate everybody who came through and tuned in. And uh, those of you who was there, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Those of you who was there, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Hey, Zeus Trevino, man, I appreciate that soup. Appreciate that soup, man. James Lee, everybody, yeah, yeah, long little pimp, you know what I'm saying? Uh, look like I seen, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, Big Bub, Big Bub know what I'm, Big Bub know exactly what I'm talking about. Edward Williams, that's in the chat. That's Big Bub, that's UGK Posse. And if y'all would go take a look at the videos that I dropped today, uh, you'll see the whole UGK Posse in perfect harmony with uh middle fingers. And I would appreciate uh, if you boys can go and start leaving some comments on these videos. We're working hard to give y'all boys some good content, some trio content that'll never happen again. You know what I mean? Because these stories can't be re-rocked. No, you either was there or you wasn't. You know what I mean? It, it, you either was there or, or you wasn't. It, 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 ain't, it ain't no way in between. You can't re-rock it. You can't rewrite history. And you can't sit there and say a nigga lying. When uh multiple people was there, trade the truth, everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hey, you look in the uh obituary. I wasn't one of the main Paul Barrows. I was doing a lot, but I wasn't one of the main Paul Barrows, but I was one of the honorary Paul Barrows. Excuse me. And you know, another thing that tripped me out, man. People wanted those obituaries people were asking to buy the obituaries All right. we were giving them we were giving them to people but it got to a point where 
wasn't anymore. And people started asking and offering. I remember somebody offered me $100 for my obituary. Now, did I sell it or not? Uh, I don't remember. I don't think I did, though. What I'm going to do with, you know, $100? Nah, nah. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't think I sold it. I think I had a couple, but I don't know where they at. But it was the most beautiful obituary I ever saw. Very unfortunate and very sad. Yeah. But that's what it was hitting for. Let me see. Came from Lafayette, no, hold on. Came from Lafayette, Louisiana to the funeral long little pimp. Yeah, man. Man, they, hey, they had people every which way. Hey, man, they had people every which way. Man, my two phones was ringing like crazy, man. My two phones was going hammered. I ain't never seen people try to be my friend as much as they were trying to be my friend during that time. You know what I mean? The hotel must have had cleaning services. They should have seen something I had access to his room. Yeah, man, it's, that's, that's a whole lot going on right there with that. You know what I mean? We were down in Texas. We were down in Texas waiting for my brother to come back because as Big Bub know, and, and the whole crew know, he had major plans. He had major things going on and major plans. And the world was finna know about some Pimp C Presents, the UGK Posse. We got the Big, Big Nuts. Oh, yeah, it couldn't. That was the name of the first project. Pimp C Presents, the UGK Posse. And we got the Big, Big, Big Nuts. Big, big, big nuts. I don't know. Big, big nuts. Big, big, big nuts. It was three big nuts or two big nuts. It was some big nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we laughed like a motherfucker when he said he was going to uh, he was going to uh, name the thing that. Yeah, Bobo said that the casket was really heavy. Uh, I touched it, but it would have been it would have been overkill for me to try to get in because there was enough brothers. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there was enough brothers carrying my mans. You know what I mean? But I was right there. And when we was trying to get it into the hearse, um, it was something else. You know what I mean? It it, it was something else. So yeah, Bobo is uh absolutely correct. And what Pimp and Ken and Bobo said about uh viewing the body and how they felt and what they thought they saw, it it, it it acclimates exactly what I thought and what I saw. You know what I mean? But it's just nobody from the posse had ever talked about that. So that's why I ain't never jumped in there too heavy up on it. You know what I'm saying? In the book, hold on. In the book, it said that the dude, Larry, and some chick was, yeah, yeah, that's what the book said. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Pimp and Justin Timberlake would have never, let me see, sold some money. Uh, Pimp and Justin Timberlake would would have sold some money. Uh, I don't know what that means, but yeah, hey man, it's a lot of uh, mystery lies around my man Depp. Uh, that ain't what I'm here to do tonight. I just wanted to tell y'all about what the boys were talking about and elaborate on it a little bit more. Yeah, we saw we saw um, we saw uh, a body that didn't favor. The pimp. And whatever reasons why why it was like that, you know what I mean? It, it, it got to be some medical shit that's over my head that I don't know about. Let me see. Big Bub. Yeah, Big Bub. Bub know what I'm talking about. Came down to Port Arthur. Pay my respects. Already, man. Yeah, when we when we left the uh when we left the funeral, you'll see like a lot of pictures of Everybody at Mama House, you know what I'm saying? Famous players and the pimps and all that there. But I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I had a lot going on. And so I was checking on Mama because it was so much. It was, it was, it was chaotic. Mama House was just a calamity. 
uh, pimps running around everywhere, taking pictures, posing, doing whatever, doing whatever. And I asked mama, you know what I'm saying, was she okay? Because I was wanting to dish the crowd. I was wanting to dish the crowd. I, I had had enough, you know what I mean? Uh, me and my baby mama was getting to the box. Hey, it was just, it was just so much going on. So I wind up, matter of fact, I think me and Lil V and Bam, uh, AZ Hustlers, I think we dipped. I think we had two whores. Well, two, two ladies. I'll just say that. Two ladies. And we dipped to my studio. And we had us a couple of uh, drinks and we made some drunk records. That's when drunk records was born. While everybody was at mama house doing whatever, me, Bam, and, 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 and Lil V was at the studio uh, making some drunk records. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, there's some video footage of that session, uh, probably on my YouTube of uh, two drunk uh, Latin girls kissing, uh, Lil V and, and, and uh, Bam had nothing to do with it. I perpetuated it all. No. <laughs> But it's your boy, he's the lead. Let me see who else talking about what and we're gonna get out about of this thing, man. Let me see. Tough time, he's just glad we stayed silent. Yeah, man, we made it, man. We made it, man. We made it. Let me see. Yeah, the both of us and the casket was heavy as fuck. We got our brother to his resting spot. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, Mitch and Bun. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. It was it was a lot going on. Like they put him in the wall, man. You heard thunder, then it started raining. Same thing happened when mama got put in the wall. Clear as day. And all of a sudden you hear boom, boom, boom. And it started raining. Hey, man, that's that's some supernatural shit. I don't know, man. But it's your boy. He's a lead man. It is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. And it's going to do what it's going to do. You know what I'm talking about? It's always long little pimp and mama with free young pimp, man. I'm out.